Oh boy, time now for another episode of Mr. Nelson Sunday Comics. And continuing on with the old faithful, you know him, you love him, the Blue Beetle and Curtain Call for Death. Hmm. Okay. Shirt by Charles Nicholas. Well, what sinister force lies behind the mysterious suicides? Jeez Louise. What secrets lie behind, uh, hidden behind the curtain of death? As victim after victim takes the violent road to the grave, the Blue Beetle seeks to find why. There is a curtain call for death. Well, then, yeah, somebody should. Anyway. Boys, this is Lord Summer of Scotland Yard. He's in the country to observe American police method. Very glad to meet you. Yeah, oh, wait, that's not okay. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, Dan and Mike will take you around to our various departments. Hope I'm not putting you out any. Not at all, your lordship. You'll find our headquarters most interesting, Lord Summer. I say, what is that chap doing on the roof? Heavens, he's jumped! You're good! Yep, there he goes. <laughs> Jeez. Daddy, this is John Doyle, the millionaire sportsman. This note I found on him says he was tired of living. No kidding. I think we'd better go to his home and tell them what happened. At Doyle's home, they were met by his secretary. Uh, Lex Luthor. You're sure that is your boss's handwriting? Yes. But why should he kill himself? He was cheerful enough when James Bourne, the actor, lunched with him earlier. I see that Mr. Coyle? Doyle made out a $10,000 check to cash. Any idea why? No, sir. He's never done that before. Something screwy here. We're going to the bank. I say, old fellow, do you think there's anything wrong? One doesn't pull out a lot of money from the bank to commit suicide -y. You suspect foul play. But how will the bank help you? You wait out here for us. We'll be right back. As you say, gentlemen. Whoops. I hit the wrong button. So anyway, as Dan and Mike enter the president's office, a masked face peers in the window unnoticed. I remember Mr. Doyle himself presented that check. I see. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> they don't notice the... yeah. In the nick of time, Dan spots the killer and ducks. Oh, yeah, that was close. Mary St. Patrick, what's that? So, um... If he, you know, I, I thought he was trying to shoot the banker, you know, so Dan, <laughs> Dan got out of the way. And whoops. Anyway, Sonny boy, when I get my hands on you, you'll be sorry. And he sounds like he's like, what, he's going to do, spank him? I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> there he goes over that fence. Daddy, wait for me. I hope that mass killer doesn't get away. Where the deuce did he disappear to? Well, there's three cans. I'm, I'm thinking he's in that one. Guess not. Without warning. Ooh! Never jump on a cop's shoulder, buddy. You'll be lucky if you don't break your neck. I thought you wanted to talk to him. Now, we'll take that rag off your face and see what you look like. Think so? I choose to keep my identity secret. A bullet is good medicine for cops. If I had time, to, I'd let you say your prayers. But at that instant... No, you ain't, Bigora. Ouch. Mr. Bigora, I always miss when the chips are down. What a fool I was to let that mug get the best of me. No more a fool than I was. We must be getting hot. No, it's winter time. No, no, I mean, I'll bet that masked man is responsible for Doyle's death. Hey, Danny, look at this. It says Actors' Equity on here. And it's signed James Bourne. The Bourne identity. Hmm. 
That's the actor who had lunch with Doyle before he fell off. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. The building. That's a lead, Mike. Rushing back to the waiting cab, which is running quite the tally, you know. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Lord Summer. Quite all right. You two go up to Bourne's and find out how that card came to be in that alley. I must see the chief about something. Back at the station, this check was forged, and the forgery looks like Scribbler Martin's work. Scribbler was killed in a train wreck six months ago. Um, hello, Mike Fine. Oh, okay. okay. Hello, Mike Feinborn. No, he wasn't home. You look low in the mouth. What's up? Is that supposed to be Dan saying that? Or I don't know. Whatever. Whoops. Uh, no. Jeez, why is it all weird? Anyway. Nothing much, Mike, but I'm going on the trail of a dead man. Well, by all the saints of... Did he say dead man, old boy? Unable to follow up his lead, Dan Gare suddenly remembers he's the Blue Beetle, so he becomes the Blue Beetle. As you say, this actor, James Bourne, is mixed up in this? Mm. I'd bet my eye that Bourne was the masked guy who took the pot shot at me. But right now, I'm interested in finding Scribbler Martin, who died six months ago. Well, if he's dead, I mean... Oh, you mean you think he faked it? Mm. Here's some vitamin 2X. Uh, oh, where did he go? I'm sure that scribbler forged those checks. Maybe I'll find him at his old uh, hangout. Suddenly, holy! The blue beetle spins his wheel, swerves alongside an uncontrolled car. That's William Bullock in there. He'll be killed. Got to act fast. Won't be able to avoid a collision. Got to get out. <laughs> Jeez. Grabbing the unconscious form, the blue beetle streaks out of the doomed car and takes him to a furniture store. You know, he might want to pick up a new bed or couch or something. You never know. Uh, through the plate glass window. Okay, I don't know why you had to do that. But anyway, and thoughtful to them to keep beds in. Finding Bullock, the millionaire broker, unharmed. The Blue Beetle searches his pockets <laughs> okay, and finds, yep, there's the suicide note. And again, there are all the earmarks of it having been forged by, by Scribbler. I'll take him home. He doesn't live far from here. And while I'm at it, I'll find out if Bullock cashed any large checks made out to himself. Unknown to the Blue Beetle. Don't miss him. If he gets Bullock back to the house safely born, will I break our necks? Don't worry. I never missed yet. Ow, ow. He's down. We better make sure he's dead. Suddenly, sorry to disappoint you, boys. You should have known that bullets won't penetrate my chain mail armor. I can't be bothered with you. <laughs> okay. I'd like to have my suspicions confirmed. Who's behind all these killings? It's Born the Actor. He's hiding out in the old Stry tenement. Yeah, thanks. Now I'll get Bullock home and then I'll give Mr. Barn some attention. So anyway, at the Bullock home. What? Who are you? Refreshing to meet someone who doesn't know me. I brought your father home. Your father was almost killed, but he's safe now. I'd like to see his private papers. Of course. Come with me. After a hurried search, the blue beetle finds what he is after. A check made out to cash. This is it. Another piece of evidence that will hang James Bourne. I don't see how. It's made out to cash, whoever that is. Um, yeah... So the blue beetle streaks through the night. Next stop, the Stry Tenement, where I hope to find Mr. Bourne. Well, there he is. And when the blue beetle looks through the skylight, well, well, all the actors in the drama are here. James Bourne and Scribbler Martin seem to be carrying their leads. Oh, the leads, whatever. 
Hurry with that script, no, scripture, <laughs> that signature scribbler. The boys and I have to go back to Bullock's home and really finish him this time. Yeah, if you ain't talked to the cops already. The Blue Beetle! That's right. I get better results with a table. Outside the air may do you good. You're supposed to be dead, Scribbler. What's the answer? They mistook somebody else for me in that train wreck. Thought that was the setup. You'll just stay here till the cops pick you up. Born slipped out. I'd better get him. But when he reaches the stairs. So, Blue Beetle! Our tip was right, eh? This time you're coming with me. Get him. The blue beetle plummets downward, head first. He's out. Now I got him right where I want him. My dream is going to come true. Now I'll see what the blue beetle really looks like. I hope he's cute. Will Mike Madigan rip that mask off? I don't know. Let's see. I heard the blue beetle had been coming into this house, and I'd... And sure he is, Lord Summer. Oh, it's Lord Summer. Well, whatever. At that moment, glad you hesitated long enough for vitamin 2 extra storm of strength. Before the policemen have recovered from their surprise, the blue beetle grabs Lord Summer and... Come with me, your lordship. Put me down, I say. Indeed, this is most irregular. There he goes again. Oh, he stole the police car. I was wondering if his, uh, his blue beetle mobile was yellow, oddly enough. I demand an explanation. A millionaire's life is in danger. You might do me the favor of guarding him. A few minutes later, the blue beetle arrives at Bullock's home. Mr. Bullock, an attempt will be made on your life by James Bourne. What? Huh? Well, shouldn't we do something? Lord Sumner of Scotland Yard will guard you while I go after Bourne. I thank you, sir. So, okay. Of course, he may not be here, but I'll find that out soon enough. The windows are locked. I have to break them. <laughs> While I'm here, I might as well see if I can find any more evidence against Bourne. What's this? A pencil drawing of Lord Summer. What's it doing here? Suddenly. <laughs> Jeez. Shouldn't have chowed out on that cheeseburger. Suddenly the truth. Ye gods, Lord Summer and Bourne are one of the same. And I left the killer back there with Bullock. Because I'm an idiot. While well, back at Bullock's place... And Bourne struck me over the head, knocking me out. I, I will tell everything to the police. You will, eh? To the amazement of Bullock and his daughter, the fake English detective whips out a gun. Lord Summer, why? Get out of my way, you! As Jane flings herself upon the enraged murderer, smashes her out of the window. Yeah. Eee! But at that instant, the blue beetle arrives. I see that Bourne, alias Lord Summer, has already gotten started. Oh, I better hurry up and save her. Oh, man. I gotta stop narrating my whole life. After catching the girl in his arms, the blue beetle puts her down in the hallway of the house. I'll leave her here. While in the apartment, the fake Lord Summer rips off his makeup. You may want to know who I really am. I'm James Bourne. You. Suddenly, the sign of the blue beetle stay away from me i'll kill you not the way you're aiming well it's right in your face so okay i'd better floor you before you really hit me <laughs> sit down mr Bourne, and start talking i'll tell everything don't hurt me please I needed money, so I forged checks made out to cash, made myself up to look like the millionaires, and then cashed them. So the forgeries wouldn't come to light, I killed the men whose names I forged, using fake notes to make it look like suicide. And why this Lord Summer stuff? That was so I could stick around the police and be warned if they suspected foul play. Oh. Oh, yeah. Back on the beat, and so the Blue Beetle solved the whole case. 
I gotta give him credit. I never suspected Lord Summer. But that blue beetle, I'll get him yet. Well, to be fair, he didn't suspect him either until it was damn near too late. So, yeah. Yeah. Plus, he got the confession pretty much out of torture, you know, but, oh, well. The Blue Beetle smashes through to more and greater adventures in Mystery Men comics. Don't miss the November issue featuring the Blue Beetle in the case of Satan's private needlewoman. Huh. Well, if you say so. Anyway, let's see what we got next for this one. Uh, it's the Monster of the Swamp. And, well, there it is. A really big alligator, I guess. Big enough to eat a train. Wow. So anyway, that'll be next week on Mr. Nelson's Sunday Comics. <laughs>